and somehow I find reality lacking. <laughs> Jiggly boobs. <laughs> I uh, messed up that quote. It's uh, from the creator, uh, one of the creators of Defender of the Crown, in reference to Jim Sachs and his artwork. You know, somehow he found reality lacking when he looked at uh, Jim Sachs' artwork. Now, they're both Cinemaware games, but this is not a Jim Sachs game. But nevertheless, uh, I felt the quote was appropriate when discussing this wonderful classic Cinemaware title TV sports football. So in my last video, I was doing a uh, PAL game, a pure PAL game. I had to play it in PAL mode or else it wouldn't even run. Well, I guess, what, everybody, now it's time. <laughs> we'll uh, follow that one up with an American game. And you can't get more American than uh, stealing the name of uh, the world's most popular sport and making it your own, and it has nothing to do with the other sport in question. That would be uh, football, or American football, as it is known to the Europeans, and we know their football as soccer here. Now, as an American, I will have to say I am fully with uh, the Europeans when they... <laughs> When they have make no sense of uh, the American football, why is it called? There are literally two plays, two plays in all of American football that involve your feet actually touching the ball. It's a terrible name for this sport. Nevertheless, the sport itself is it's a wonderful sport. It's a great sport, um, and uh, I just wanted to show it off today. Because, uh, well, you, you, you can't get more American than this sport. What's it called? Where everybody's not called American football. It's not called TV sports. American football is called TV sports football. And what company was responsible for this gem of a game? Well, it was Cinemaware. None other than Cinemaware. Where was Cinemaware located? California, everybody. Yes. This is an Amiga game, an original Amiga game. And it was made by Cinemaware, an American Company. This is an American Amiga game. It was meant to be displayed in NTSC. Do you notice the television behind this guy is in 4-3? Yes, everything should be in 4-3. You watch the uh, watch any video of this online, it will be stretched into widescreen. No, 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 everybody. This is a American NTSC game. It should be displayed in 4-3. You know, not just displayed in 4.3, actually running in NTSC mode at the correct speed, because it's going to be slower in PAL mode, but it will run in PAL mode. That's why That's why everybody doesn't, they don't understand when there is an Amiga game and it's American. They don't understand it because those American games will usually run in PAL mode, so they just, they don't understand. Well, I'm here, everybody. I'm here to tell you all, yes, the, the Amiga was a thing in America. Many games and almost all software. We're made for Americans, so it's, it's, listen, you don't get that perspective, I'm that perspective, it's an important perspective, and uh, not only that, this is a football game, this is a sports game, and uh, before all the nerds go running off, you know, let me just tell everybody that sports, yeah, nerds are not above sports, okay, you know, when you look at uh, the things that drive a person that is a fanatic at sports uh, it's usually the stats it's the stats it's the numbers that is what they care about that is what drives them that is what fuels them uh they just you, you take down every little last stat imaginable it is a extraordinarily nerdly thing to care about it's not just a jock thing no no nerds nerds can absolutely fall in love with sports and before all my European friends you know run away because this is an American football game no 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 this is one of the most classic games this is one of the most definitive titles for the Amiga ever it was a very very good selling game on the Amiga uh, it's a very well, well reviewed game even in the British magazines which I'm going to show you a little bit later on yes this is uh, one of the all time classics and if you don't know about it well that's a goddamn shame because this is a classic it's an amiga classic so you should care about it enough to at least look at it you know not just look at it be proud of this game what does this game look like does this game remind you of anything else everybody uh, kind of you know another uh, kind of franchise by electronic arts Maybe with a certain famous uh, commentator, uh, John Madden. Maybe it reminds you a little bit of John Madden football and a very uh, the top selling of all time football game. And guess what? Guess which game was made first, everybody? The one you are looking at right 
now it was John Madden football that uh, definitely got uh, stole some influence uh, from this game right here. This is a revolutionary game. This game means something in terms of history. So, watch. Now let's see what uh, my go-to uh, magazine has to say about TV sports football. This is from the American magazine Amiga World from July uh, 1989. The game itself was released in 88, but uh, Amiga World always took their sweet-ass time reviewing anything. <laughs> Playing against another person or computer, TV sports football puts you in charge of a football team for a single game or for an entire season. The playing field scrolls up or down to accommodate the action by 22 animated players, one of which you control with the joystick. On the offense, you always control the man with the ball. When on defense, you choose the man you want to Control. You can identify who has the ball and the defensive player you control because the player's uniform blinks into colors. You set up a team in one of four basic formations. I formation pro set shotgun or kick when on offense. 4-3, four, 3-4, three, three, four, six, 1 or 6-1 key when on defense. And then choose one of four basic plays available for each formation. Although the actual number of plays is fairly limited, the variations are numerous. Although not as detailed a simulation as Grid Run, TV Sports Football is a nice blend of strategy and arcade elements. I enjoyed playing against a friend most, the computer player was a very poor at uh, detecting my play calling patterns. M the magazine does have something a little bad to say about the game here. The major problem with TV sports football are the TV elements. Well, maybe that's, you know, it's kind of called TV sports football there, Amiga World. <laughs> Stupid full screen pictures of the crowd, coaches, or cheerleaders that the program sometimes shoves in front of you after a score. They add nothing to the atmosphere of the game and take exasperating long to load. I can't understand why the company went so far out of its way to interrupt the flow of a good game. As for commercials, the best solution is to ignore them and raid the kitchen during breaks in the action. 4995 Cinemore Corp, 4165 Thousand Oaks Boulevard, Westlake Village, California, 91362, joystick required. Now at some point in this video, I am going to go live and you are going to uh, hear my opinion about that la those last statements from Amiga World. Uh, Regarding the TV elements being the worst thing possible for this game, and no, I think, well, you'll hear what I have to say later on that. In the meantime, we are playing a, uh, well, a standard football, what would become a standard football game throughout uh, the 90s with the, you know, well-known Madam series. This is what it looks like. This is the basic elements of it. Um, the gameplay itself, it's, it's a great... Um, Definitely for the time, it is a wonderful uh, game. By no means is it perfect. Here we are uh, kicking a field goal, and by the way, this is the only uh, uh, your your only chance for an extra point. You, there's no two point conversions. Um, this is uh, going for the field goal. But here is uh, some of that uh, uh, TV style action here. And again, I. I think it's got a lot of atmosphere to it, but you don't get to see. They kick off, you don't get to see it. Uh, there are definitely uh, some bad things about this game. There are certain uh, uh, things you can exploit, in, like just like every single uh, 80s, 90s, uh, you know, uh, sports game with a little bit of arcade action. <laughs> I was a little pissed off there. <laughs> there are things you can exploit. There are certain plays that, you know, once you play this game enough, <laughs> You'll start humming with excitement while you, uh, while you get your, uh, you know, that play that works nearly every time. Well, it's not, it doesn't, it's not quite that bad in this game, but there are plays that you will learn, you know, uh, you can get a lot out of them. But unlike in other uh, sports games where those plays will definitely make you win the game, well, it's kind of balanced out in this game because, uh, defensively speaking, um, it's it's terrible. It's well, your team on defense is terrible. Um, um, it's just you, pretty much. I mean, you can be good on defense, but there's a lot of other people playing defense. Um, that is where the other team can definitely uh, get the score back. So always, oh, yeah. there's my uh, touchdown pass there from. From uh, the girl Stygian Phoenix, that's my uh, quarterback. That's who I chose to be the quarterback. We got uh, we got some women in the NFL now. <laughs> and there, that is the computer. Actually, uh, the first first parts of this game, while I was learning it, 
I let the um, computer control the passing a lot of the time. Not all the time, but <laughs> some of the passing I let, let the computer control. And I let the computer control the field goals. And well, the computer isn't always so wonderful, I'm telling you. It's better to control it yourself. And here we meet some of that atmosphere in the form of uh, the totally wonderfully unique Don Baden, who bears no resemblance whatsoever to any else that would go on to make a more well-known series of games at all. I mean, I see no resemblance there whatsoever. <laughs> Don Madden for CW uh, TV after, uh, after the halftime uh, show. You will be greeted with a few stats that you can uh, pour your eyes over and uh, you will then return to the action. But how about we look at some other things? I mean, there's really only so much I can talk about on screen when it comes to a sports game. There's, 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 repeat, repeat, repeat. But we can uh, show you some other things, like from the manual, which does definitely takes its time uh, explaining the game itself, but it has, has a lot of pages dedicated to uh, just overall uh, football theory and such, and the history of football. Here is the history of football for uh, all of the rest of the world who has no clue what this American game is all about. Other team sports are said to be symbolic representations of war. Football, however, is war. In other sports, while there's physical contact, it's largely incidental. That is, the contact occurs in the course of players pursuing the legitimate game objective. In football, that contact itself is a legitimate game objective. North American-style football originated in the latter part of the 19th century as a hybrid of rugby and soccer. In fact, when Canada's McGill University played a two-game series against Harvard in 1874 in the first Canadian-American football confrontation, one game was contested under rugby rules and the other under soccer guidelines. You know, rugby, maybe. Rugby, maybe. I, I see no resemblance whatsoever towards soccer. We have seen offense elevated and favored through the rules protecting quarterbacks while defensive players are increasingly constrained. We have seen training techniques create bigger, stronger, faster athletes protected by science fictional battle suits and amped up by theoretically illegal anabolic steroids, while sports doctors find better techniques for restoring them when the inevitable injuries occur. But the students of history will tell you that perhaps the greatest impact of football has come from the pervasive presence of the one-eyed monster. Television, TV has bankrolled professional football, lifted into the multi-million dollar industry into the nation's number one spectator sport, and has kept us all indoors on Sunday, the day that used to be devoted to church and lemonade on the porch and long walks in the woods or park. It's now mass Sunday with its violent world and fierce enforcement and doomsday defense and 11 angry men observed Paul Zimmerman in a thinking man's guide to pro football. Let us return to some defensive uh, talk. and We're now, uh, this is us defending the field from the uh, field goal. We are jumping. You see me in the background. Just I'm randomly jumping. I, there, uh, to my knowledge, this has absolutely no effect whatsoever on anything. You can't block. I've never seen them ever, uh, you know, do it low enough to where you could actually block it and you can't move. You can't move forward. You can't uh, rush them or anything. You are stuck there behind the wall of players you're just jumping for effect and that is where you know the game yes in presentation it is wonderful presentation is wonderful when you are kicking the field goal presentation is terrible when you are defending the football because you're just you're just jumping that has no effect you have no control whatsoever and well yes normally speaking you don't have much control in football if somebody's kicking an extra point or someone's kicking a field goal. It's all up to them, pretty much. It's not it's not very likely that you are going to be able to uh, rush them and tackle them or block a football. But it is possible in this game. It's not it's not possible as far as I can tell. So, defensively speaking, yes, you yourself you might be able to uh, you jump in and get a sack or two. But uh, the, the defense, your other teams, the computer control, it's just bad. And here it is. Uh, at the end of the game, you get our announcer here doing it. But do you notice anything different here? There's no music running. You know, it's, it, it, in terms of presentation, I do feel like there, uh, maybe this game was rushed out or something. I don't know. Because it feels uh, sadly missing in a couple areas. Uh, the other major area I'm going to get to uh, towards the end of the game, but uh, even when every single game is done, they put so much effort into the soundtrack and the presentation during the first part, and then nothing. And then once you see your stats, what do you got to do? How do you get back? How do you want to you play another game? You got to restart the entire game, everybody. <laughs> 
I didn't get to show you the start of the game. I, I felt like we should just go right into the game. That would be the most exciting way to do it. But this is how every game starts once you put in the disc. You go to a main menu and you get to, you know, click. You can practice. You can go to a league, go to exhibition. You can go to your clipboard. Um, this is us actually starting a new season. Again, we're just going to show you the creation process because I didn't want to show it at the beginning of the video. We're going to start a new season. And from there, we get to edit our teams now these are not the uh these, there's no uh, associations with this there's no uh you know nfl players associations there's no even nfl association period these teams are not the teams okay uh, apparently it's okay to uh steal the names of any given city in, in america but uh you are not allowed to actually steal the team name so it's uh we are the detroit lions oh but we're not the lions obviously because we got no uh, license there. So we're Detroit. And all of these, uh, we are editing names. Thank thankfully, they let you edit names. Um, and I'm going to put uh, several of my friends on YouTube in these names. But the names that are not um, from YouTube, they are they're just random names that whoever the hell, you know, designed the game put in there. There's no actual resemblance. I don't know if maybe, like, some of the positions, I don't know is. Would they have put a, like a Barry Sanders in there just via his stats? You know, via, I guess he's a running back, halfback, I guess. Um, I don't know uh, if, if they were that involved. I don't think they were. Um, but theoretically, you could put the uh, actual players' names of the time in there and give them... You can, you can alter their stats to a degree, like a, you know, like a role-playing game. If you take one from one area... Well, you got to put it into another, you know, you, you can't just uh, make a guy have, you know, 9.9 .9 of everything. So, uh, there are limitations there. And now we're going to take a look at the stats. And the stats are an essential part in terms of the nerd playing these games. Uh, the stats are an essential part of any uh, any sports games. Um, they ate, The people that bought these games, this is what they ate up by far, uh, far and away anything. Uh, people love their stats. Now the only bad thing about these stats, there's plenty of stats in this game to sink your teeth into. Uh, the thing about the stats is that for being on the Amiga, uh, there is absolutely no printers. There's no printer drivers. You can't print these stats. I, I, I think that's pissed off my dad a little bit. I think my dad uh, actually had the... N <laughs> he, he got out pa pieces of paper and he, uh, he would... Uh, do this stuff in pencil. He would do. He would record his own stats because you couldn't print the damn stats. Uh, there were games that came out way before this uh, where you could print your stats. That is a very big oversight. I imagine they just couldn't fit any printer drivers onto the disc. Nevertheless, there should have been something. There should have been an extra disc, some way to uh, you know print off these stats. Now I'd like to take a look at what the uh, British had to say about this American game here. Super Bowl over by Cinemaware. Coach, I think I broke my leg in that last play. Don't be such a whip. Get back out there. Such is life in American football. The gladiatorial sport of the 80s is no place for the faint-hearted, except in the computer form. Chuck safely behind the computer keyboard. None of these muscle-bound juggernauts can get anywhere near you. A sports simulation is something of a new departure for Cinemaware, but has been put together with the same sort of attention to graphics and detail as their previous games. Unlike most sports sims, this one also has a good deal of humor thrown in for the game at halftime and at other random moments presentation. Screens pop up featuring such amusing items as a TV sports commentator, cheerleaders, locker room report, and crowd scene. These are fun to watch a couple times with the option to skip them. It's welcome thereafter. You don't have to be great at football to appreciate the action. The computer can be left to its own devices, which is great to watch and helps you learn. You can call plays and let the computer put them into action or reverse it and try to play what the computer calls. If you set up the team as decided beforehand, it even plays without being watched. And over in England, it is uh, 24 and 99 pounds. Check out one more uh, British magazine here. TV Sports Football is a staggering accomplishment, even considering the Amiga's capabilities. The game itself would be enough, but when you add the little finishing touches, such as the referee and the constant supply of on screen match information and player statistics, you end up with one of the most realistic and complete packages ever. It may be my bias as a keen American football fan taking over here, but TV Sports Football is the most entertaining, accurate, and engrossing sports simulation I've ever experienced. If Cinemaware keeps Keeps on improving at this rate. I can't imagine what its next release, Large of the Rising Sun, will turn out like. 
Graphics 93%, sound 90%, value 87, playability 89%, overall 93% for an American football game. One last review, everybody. This is from the legendary computer gaming world, the American Magazine, which covered a whole hell of a lot of systems, including the Amiga. TV, sports, football. We believe this is a genuine breakthrough that combines three things never done as a mix. One, a satisfying arcade game. With two, a complete statistical game. That three, emulates an actual television broadcast. Bob Jacob, that's from CinemaWare, though. This part here is actually from the magazine. This first part in a series of sports games should prove interesting to joystick jack and statistic salience alike. The capability for a league play with a mix of both human and computer managed teams presented with the company's usual stunning visual effects makes this a unique action strategy product of Amiga and IBM 4995. Now, the computer game world likes this so much, it makes, well, it just got out of their 100 greatest lists of all time, which, uh, very uh, fascinating issue, which they did in 1996. I believe it was like 119, 120. It was in that general areas like it was uh, right up there in their hundred uh, and it was also uh, in terms of uh, they also had a separate list for the most uh, important games of all time I, something like that and I believe uh, TV sports football was uh, right on up there in the top ten for uh, the most important because this obviously it spawned Madden and such so let me ask everybody out there, uh, you know, that's covering Amiga games, uh, why does this one not make your list, huh? Why does this not make the cut? Uh, is it just because, uh, you know, primarily the people looking at the Amiga are European? Well, if, I don't care. I don't care if you're European. This is looked at as one of the, as an influential game. Uh, and not just on the Amiga, in terms of history, in terms of all computer games, this is historically looked at as a very important game. Why have I never, ever, ever seen anybody play this game on any Amiga channel? You are making a mistake. Correct it. Now, before we go live uh, to me playing, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, fumbles in this game. Fumbles are the worst thing in the world. <laughs> You gotta you gotta read the manual if you if you want to figure out how to do the fumbles, because <laughs> it always goes to the other team. It is so terrible. Ah, fumbles. Let's go to me. So who out there is ready for some playoff action? It's the wild card games. We're not participating in those, but we will just hit play, and the computer should uh, automatically do them. I'm thinking. Hopefully, hopefully I don't have to watch them. Yes. So, uh, Minnesota beat Philadelphia, 24-20. Cincinnati beat Kansas City, 43-9. And I think then we can just go back to clipboard. And, uh, let's see what, let's see if it changed the standings or anything. Probably not. Yeah, it's still 16. I don't think anybody, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so it's not going to alter the, the stats at all once you enter the playoffs, but we can go back to schedules. And it's now time for the good shit. It's going to be Detroit against Minnesota. Uh, I don't like Minnesota in this. <laughs> I think I faced them twice already. Uh, not big fans of Minnesota, although I have beaten them. I've beaten everybody, so. <laughs> uh, let's do it. Let's see how it is. Let's, uh, let's play the game. I don't, can I play the game or what? Do I have to restart the damn game? I might have to actually physically, oh, no. Now we go to league, it should do it now, right? Please? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Minnesota at Detroit, we will play that one. I never get tired of the music, I have to say. <laughs> uh, I believe a review of an Amiga World said they need, you know, why, why destroy a great game with all this other shit? I mean, this is the shit that makes this game stand the test of time, actually. They, they might have thought, there were a lot of those anal people back then, you know. To them, a great football game was not didn't have graphics at all. It just had, you know, simulations. 
just had the stats. That, that was a great football game. So a lot of them went a little bit kicking and screaming into the graphical age. And definitely they needed to do a better job marrying the two fields together. <clears throat> but uh, this is what makes the game actually worth playing to this day, is this stuff. If it, if it was just the, the way it looked and the way it played, it wouldn't be worth playing, honestly. <laughs> it's, it's all of the shit put together that makes it the game. I am a 15-point favorite in today's game. The CWFL playoffs. In their last meeting, back on week 13, Detroit demolished Minnesota 35-10. to That was a tough 35-10. to <laughs> I was screaming. <laughs> Minnesota wins the coin toss. What are they going to do? They're going to receive it. I, I hate the coin toss in this game. It's like the, the, the computer almost always wins the coin toss. It knows. It knows what it's going to be. Although when it, when it elects to kick or receive, it's about 50-50. It decides, oh, I'll kick it or I'll receive it. So, you know, if I won the coin toss, I'd receive it every time, so... It would be really nice if you could actually see JQ Gamer kick off for Detroit and see the ball move. I don't know why it doesn't allow that. <clears throat> so we have our play selections here. I'm, I usually let the computer call the defensive plays unless I'm really pissed off and uh, you know, I just want to all out blitz them or something. But I always do control one of the defenders. <laughs> you see him get stuck there. Oh. <laughs> and he can stay there all day. He's not going to get a penalty for holding. I'll get a penalty for holding if I did that. I will get a penalty for holding. He can stay there all game long. He's not going to... The computer never gets a penalty. It's bullshit. <laughs> it's, a, it's such bullshit. <laughs> Uh, that doesn't happen very often, but when it does, it really pisses you off because it's one of those times when you're like, oh, yeah, you're holding the ball and you're not going to get a penalty, but I'll get a penalty. <clears throat> I believe the strategy with Minnesota is to not really blitz them all too much, I think. I got it! <laughs> Fumbles are the worst thing in this game. I hate them so much, they're such a pain in the ass to do. Because you gotta. The second it says fumble, you gotta hit the joystick fire button. It's an utter pain in the ass. I hate it. You, the first half of the season, I lost every single fumble. And this game has too many fumbles. It's everywhere. The fumbles are fucking everywhere. There. Might be first down. Yes, first down. Good. I'm hope, I, was, I was hoping to give you a you know one good defensive run, and then you know one good offensive run before you know I switched to halftime or something. So maybe this will be good enough. Oh yeah, come get me! Ugh. I think we can uh, get a touchdown through the eye formation here. I tend to rush a lot, but there are, I've, I've figured out a lot more plays, and i figured out how to pass it and shit since I've done all this. So I'm going to go this, yeah, I definitely got this one. <laughs> Touchdown. And that's me, that will be Shot 97 Retro. Shot 97 Retro scores, touchdown. And Jiku Gamer will try for the extra point. I, I know this thing before it, it says anything. Six, I played all 16 games, folks. That external drive scares the shit out of me every time. It always sounds like it has a read-write error. It does, it does the start of the read-write error. <clears throat> and then it just, it works. And I do the uh, extra points myself, too. I think the first half of the season, I didn't know how to do that either, and the computer was just doing it. And the computer was missing, 
you know, every once in a while, and it sucked, but I've learned so much through just playing it, and I also took a gander at the, the fumble thing I figured out by reading the manual, because uh, I was just so pissed off, I lost every one. Hi, Mom. Hi, Mom. Anyways, I'll see you guys back at halftime, probably. We are going to see what we can do here. Uh, final couple minutes, see if we can't get ourselves another touchdown. Humiliate these bastards some more. I have learned completely how to uh, quarterback myself here. So I am in control of all the passing and such. Oh, <laughs> he normally doesn't do that on that play. Ah, uh, normally he does not do that on that play. Oh, whatever. I don't care. I'll do a running play. I don't care. Uh, Minnesota is, has not been what I remember them to be. Maybe it's because I'm better now. But I am just kicking their butts. I can pass it. I can run it. I can do everything against these idiots. So, third down, three to go. We'll, we'll do another run. This, this configuration, though. Uh, let's see what this gives us here. Still going to run it. Oh, that ain't going to be good for us. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> they got us there. Fourth down, five to go. You know what? Fuck it. I'm going to call timeout. And uh, we are going to go for it. I'm going to do a shotgun play. Uh, see if he can't run over here somehow. Let's see if we can't get Let's see if we can't get it. Come on, come get me. Oh, shit, I did not expect you to do that, you idiot! Oh, he dropped it! <laughs> what the fuck? And then you let him, you let him go to out of bounds, too, you idiots! I mean, yeah, it doesn't matter, even if I win. Like, I'm going to destroy these guys, but I'm telling you, this game is infuriating. It's infuriating because I am all the defense. I'm the only one that does anything on this defense. The computer is utterly terrible at defense. I did that tackle. It's like, if I screw up, you know, you cannot count on the defense to do anything. It's fucked over. It's just, it's terrible. It's two down. The computer is stupid. So if we can manage... Oh, he's smart. He's smart. He's actually going to go for the field goal, you son of a bitch. <laughs> On second down, the computer was smart enough to go for the field. It's usually not that smart. <laughs> it knew without his timeouts it was fucked. Uh, it, it, Minnesota had a field goal attempt before, and <laughs> it went way wide. I don't know if their kicker is too damn good. It's going to be good. It's good. It's about time. It's about time, you idiots. Let's see what Don Baden has to say. CWTV, I'm Don Baden. You know, when I played pro ball, we didn't have contract disputes. We had no injured reserve status. The guys I played football with, we were real ball players. We had one guy on our team named Sledgehammer Harris. Boy, that guy could hit. Plan. He broke his nose three times in one game. It looked like the Zetter Z. The next year they gave us helmets. Now let's get back to the game. Nothing special. That was nothing special in terms of the playoffs. I'm really hoping there's something special in terms of the playoffs for me to show you. Well, how about it, guys? What do you guys think? Do you think there's anything special in terms of the playoffs? We are in the CWF Bowl. It definitely it has a playoff system. That's kind of nice. Well, what's what's the is there anything here? Is there anything here for us that's special in terms of making it to what is essentially the Super Bowl of this game? That's what you see right there, the CWFL Championship Bowl, that little picture graphic. Yeah, that's it. That is it. That is all this game has to offer us special in terms of making it this far, making it to the playoffs, making it to the final game, and indeed eventually winning the final game. That's that's all this one has for us. I actually don't have the footage to the end. I, I, I guess I lost it somewhere along the way. Um, I, I, I uh, recorded this game in January 
um, and it's just been sitting here. It's been sitting in the vault here for all of this time. Why? Because I was so deflated. Um, I was so gung-ho to do this game, to do this review, and do it in a way that nobody else has. Uh, if you do see anybody covering this game, it's probably one of those no-talky ones where they just show off the gameplay. Obviously, they don't, they don't go that extra step. They don't uh, play through the season. They don't go to the playoffs, and they don't win the championship. I actually, uh, I went through all of that uh, burden in order to uh, go above and beyond, like I normally do in my reviews. Uh, unfortunately, unlike most of the cases, when I go above and beyond, normally I feel rewarded, at least. Uh, in terms of myself when I go above and beyond. This was the first time I ever went above and beyond and I felt deflated. And it was simply because there was nothing. There was nothing, no light at the end of the tunnel there. I went way further than anybody else would dare go when they cover a game like this. And I was at least hoping to you know, see some kind of graphic, some kind of musical composition. At least see the announcers say something. No, no, no. The guy at the beginning, uh, he didn't even mention we were in a bowl game. Don Badden at halftime, he's not going to mention that this is a bowl game. And at the very end, no music. And uh, again, the reporter, he's not going to fucking... It's just like every other game. It just ends. And then when it ends, you got to, you know, you restart the game again. Uh, and that's it. There is no nothing. There's no celebrations. I mean, they... Uh, Cinemaware, you, you came so close. You came so close to creating something truly, truly, truly special. And if, it, if they just didn't go... Cinemaware themselves didn't go that extra mile. You know, it really caused me to just put it in the vault, to take a deep, long, long breath, because if I would have reviewed it at the time I finished recording, I, I do believe the review would have been very much tainted with my negativity. Um, there's, there's lots of things not to like about the game. It's an old game. You know, it's not perfectly done. The things it does well, though, it's so good at the presentation and to get that far in the presentation and then to just utterly kick the bucket at the end just they didn't care at the end there uh, it would have been uh, they, uh, I've never seen Simaware fail so epically when of anybody they should have been the ones to succeed so <laughs> it, it hurt my soul when I did not uh, get any any kind of a reward for winning, nevertheless, uh, the game is fun. It is a legendary game on the system. It's a legendary game, period. This is the influence for John Madden football. It means something. Everybody out there it should cover. And the, other, the only other thing I have bad to say about it is the, uh, the clocks, everybody. You will have to go back to uh, see it, but this game, as in many football games, many sports games period no matter what the system is uh, no matter if it's NTSC or pal mode the clocks go too fast uh, they are way faster than real life seconds which makes various things terrible to deal with uh, especially you know you got your two minute warnings and such well it turns out that's only a one minute warning in this game uh, anyway uh, issues aside it's a wonderful fantastic game that is uh, ingrained into my skull because uh, you know watching my dad play as well I, watch, I played it myself quite a bit and in terms of you know when you look when you dig into these titles you find out historically that they are relevant and that they should be covered far more often than they are here it is I've covered it uh, thank God somebody's covered it. Uh, what else can I uh, show you? What, what else can I point you to? I've only this is my first real sports game that I've covered on this channel. I've got a lot of sports games. Played a lot of sports games. This is the uh, first one that I've actually uh, covered. I did do a pseudo uh, sports game, a table hockey game called Slam on Windows 3.1, which you can uh, check out. And the other Cinemaware title that I have done is uh, the wonderful uh, Defender of the Crown, which I dedicated to the wonderful artist James Sachs. If you uh, want to take the look at that. I will see you all in the next one. Goodbye.